Hey guys, welcome back to MassiveSynth.com tutorials. This is part two of the feature we've been doing this month, taking inspiration from the Boards of Canada sound and using Massive to create quite analog sounding tones. And in part one, we did a kind of multi stepper, kind of layered sort of riff, really, using different steppers to modulate the pitch of different oscillators to create a couple of different riffs within one synth. And we used two steppers kind of like arpeggiators really in that tutorial and in this tutorial is going to take it one step further and use three steppers for all three oscillators and just to hold down a C3 note here so yeah all the programming there is being done with inside massive so using these steppers so let's start off by creating a new sound and set up these oscillators so oscillator one is going to be the kind of really quick sort of plucky sound that I kind of blended in there so just leave that one for now and turn on oscillator two and this is going to be the bass effectively so turn it down two octaves and make it a sine triangle wave and just pull it towards about a third of the way up so it's mostly a sine we're getting a bit of triangle in there as well it's just gonna give the kind of sound a nice give the bass tone a bit more sort of kind of top end I guess take the amp down to about three quarters of the way up and leave everything else the same for now turn on oscillator 3 so this is going to be the, the lead sound so take the pitch up by one octave keep it as a square saw but just pull the wave table position so it's halfway between a square and a sawtooth wave and just take the intensity down a little bit just taking some of those kind of like top end sort of high frequencies off that oscillator free take the amp down as well to about you know just past so it's pointing just past the P and keep the root in the same we're just going to be using filter one for this sound so should have something like this now so we can hear our bass tone so we can hear our bass tone and our lead All right oscillator one now this is going to be the kind of plucks so this can stay as a square saw but just pull the weight table position so it's about a quarter of the way up so mostly a square wave what we're going to have there intensity can stay on full and let's, let's just keep the amp as it is for now so that's what we should have so far um, let's move over let's set up the voicing now monophonic and four voices turn this pan position on just pan out some of those voices a bit and we can hear we've got a bit of glide on there so turn that off right then just set the amp envelope just sharpen up the attack a bit make sure we've got some nice sustain on there as well and let's go and set this first stepper up so use this modulator 5 here as a stepper and Drag the crosshair to the first pitch modulation slot on oscillator 1. Take the amount up by plus 12. Let's sync this stepper. And these are going to be the really fast plucks that, that we heard on that sound. So I'm going to take the ratio up to 1 over 32. Activate snap to grid function. And just run it over 8 steps. And we're going to set the stepper up like this. We're going to go keep it at 0 for the first step plus 3 plus 5 plus 10 plus 8 plus 7 plus 2 and plus 7 so that's basically that's keeping it in a minor chord so listen to that oscillator 1 on its own sounding a little bit 8 bit at the moment but that's the kind of general riff we've got going there right oscillator 2 now let's set up the bass riff so 
this second modulator here or the second LFO. Make this a stepper, sync it. Ratio can go one over four, and you can basically keep the snap to grid function on. I'm going to go plus three for the first four steps, then plus seven for four steps, then plus five for four steps, then plus twelve for two, and then plus ten for the last two. So, yeah, and then drag this crosshair over here and go plus 12 on the modulation amount. So now we should have for this bass sound quite a cool little riff again using those that plus 3 uh, plus 7 we're keeping it in a minor scale basically so now we can move over to oscillator 3 the kind of melody for this sound so the third LFO, change this into a stepper, sync it again, and what I, and what we're actually going to do is use the melody from the first stepper, in this, this second step, that use the pattern we created for the first stepper in this stepper, but just change the ratio. So what we can do here, is go copy. and just paste it in there so and then yeah we've got to modulate the pitch there using that stepper go plus 12 on the modulation amount just take the ratio down to 1 over 8 now let's play that with the bass So it's a little bit messy at the moment, so let's let's sort that out. First off, we can use this final LFO here, convert this into a performer, and we can use this to modulate the amp of the first oscillator. And maybe drag the modulation amount up to about halfway. And then let's set up this performer here sync it, keep the ratio is 1 over 32 because the ratio of the stepper controlling this the pitch of this oscillator is 1 over, one over 32 so we want to keep that sort of in sync really in the x-fade sequence drag it sort of halfway in between halfway and all the way up so it's just kind of like it's just creating a bit more of a pluck on this first oscillator and we can enhance that a bit further by changing some of the curves And if you listen to when I played the sound on the intro, I kind of had this automating in and out, basically, the volume of, of this, the plucky kind of sound. So we could use a macro to do that. So drag a macro over to the second modulation slot on the amp of oscillator one, convert this into a sidechain feature by hitting the, the SC there and turning it on, checking the arrow to up. And now this is a volume for this modulation amount. It's effectively also a volume for the amp of the first oscillator. Whilst we're over on these macros, we could add a bit of vibrato to the sound. Just, just kind of wobbling the pitch a little bit, giving it quite a nice analog flavour. Right, one of the next things we could do here, set up this modulation oscillator. I'm actually going to use the position mode here to modulate the oscillator to modulate oscillator 3 and keep the position halfway mute the first two oscillators for now it's really discordant although it's given quite a bit of a nice character so we need to make sure we've got this same pitch modulation going on on the modulation oscillator which might just keep it in check a little bit more so drag that same stepper number seven over to the pitch modulation slot click and drag up to plus 12 
it's kind of sounds a little bit more in sync now so let's unmute those two oscillators again and what also we can do actually here to enhance that kind of vibrato sort of wobbly pitch is just modulate some of these pitches with a macro but just a small amount so go minus 0.10 on the modulation oscillator do the same for oscillator 3 same for oscillator 2 maybe a little bit more minus 0.14 then just go plus 0.16 on oscillator 1 and now this is just going to detune things a little bit further it's quite subtle but it's just adding to this sort of analog character of just kind of like just checking the, these pitches the pitch of these three oscillators just putting them slightly out of sync even more which is not enough to kind of destroy the sound but enough to just give it that sort of like analog kind of warm sort of thickness right then so let's add some effects in next some chorus just take the dry wet down to around quarter of the way up and a bit of reverb as well just take the dry wet down to about a third of the way up push the size up a little bit and maybe just take the color down so it's not so bright and harsh right that's the the sounds nearly come together now we can just add an EQ in there as well and just take some more of the high shelf off And I think the final thing to do here is set up the filter, which I should have done earlier really, but yeah, it's so gonna use a low pass filter and push the cut up to around halfway and the resonance right down. So it's just taking some of that harsh kind of top end off the sound. But we can add some more movement into this sound by actually modulating that cut frequency with an envelope just to sort of open up the filter as the sound plays like so what we can do here is this first envelope I've back the attack off so we've got a slow attack and we can drag the modulation we can drag this envelope over to the first modulation slot on the cut off frequency click and drag up so now we get this kind of filter sort of slow kind of filter sweep with the sound which just adds a bit of movement and just kind of opens it up and then if we play the sound here what we've got here is this this is the macro free automate in there oh, we've got some we've got some automation on the the amp envelope on the release as well which will just open it up a, even more towards the end of the sound but this macro 3 here this is controlling the plucks so this will hear you hear some of that pluck coming in Need to check that trigger zero reset on the envelope as well. So the envelope re triggers and we get that low pass kind of like sweep with each, each time a new key is pressed. Okay, so I hope you found that tutorial useful. Any questions, then, of course, just get in touch. And yeah, come and check us out for part three and part four, where we're going to be looking at these sounds we've been making in part one and part two. Look how we can take it away from Massive a little bit and start processing these sounds using some various plugins and EQs and stuff to just 
give them a bit more of an analog kind of feel really so yeah thanks for watching and hope to see you again in part three all right cheers bye Oh, my God.